What's going on everyone? It's Ben from YGO from Zero back with another Retro Yu-Gi-Oh! video. And in this video, I'm continuing the exploration into Warrior format, the format based around the 2005 February SJC in Columbus. This format is really exciting from what I've seen from it so far. There's a lot of very interesting decks that people are playing, a lot of experimentation going on. It really feels like a much more underexplored version of GOAT, which is very exciting. And if you're interested in a format like GOAT, but with a lot more diversity in the metagame at this point, um, definitely the format for you to check out. But I'm playing a deck here that I haven't really seen too many people experimenting with yet in this format, and that is Reasoning Gate Turbo. Now, if you are familiar with GOAT, you'll be familiar with this deck in that format, and you'll know how powerful that deck can be there. It may not be sort of like a tier one meta threat on the level of like Chaos Turbo and other decks like that, but it is still extremely good and something to watch out for. In this format, I think it might have the potential to be something a little bit more. I think there are a couple reasons for that. For instance, things like Chaos Turbo and Goat Control are a lot less powerful than they would be in Goat. Um, for a variety of reasons that I will get into when I cover those decks in my videos. And I think that a more aggressive deck like this can potentially, you know, take control and uh, potentially be very good in the meta, maybe even tier one. But it's a very exciting to see. I just built my own version of the deck. This isn't perfect by any means. It's just sort of what I threw together based on my experiences from covering Amsterdam format, uh, which is the first format where uh, this deck really exists. And uh, I think this deck is a pretty good first draft for that. So let's just dive into the card by card and explain the choices that I made here. So first up for the monster lineup, I just want to say when picking the monsters for this deck, I wanted every monster in this deck to be a good hit off of Monster Gate because Monster Gate is your key combo piece here and you want to make sure whenever you activate monster gate that you got something live coming down the tube now you may notice that i don't have cyberstein in this deck a lot of reason gate turbo decks that i've seen in goat do indeed include a cyberstein and it makes sense cyberstein if you hit it off of like reasoning or monster gate it's very good you just pay 5,000, you bring out a big fusion monster like master of oz and get in for a ton of damage uh, that's a very good combo but, you know, if you are lower than 5,000, then I don't like having Stein in the deck as a potential miss off of Monster Gate or Reasoning. So that's why I didn't include it in this deck. You can definitely include it if you want to. It's just I personally chose not to do it. And I think the deck still functions fine. So for our monsters, uh, we have three Fusilia Dragon, the Duel Mode Beast. That is a new inclusion for the format. This is a level seven monster, but you can just normal summon or set it, which means that you can use it as monster gate fuel. Also, if you're going for a reasoning and they call like eight, which is the thing that most people call because Dark Ninja of Chaos is a very powerful hit off reasoning, um, then you do get to get this thing out as a 2,800 attack point monster. Same if you revive it off of something like Premature Burial or Call of the Haunted. For our other normal summonable monster, we've got Sacred Crane. This is a level four, 1,600 attack, 400 defense, Wing Beast uh, that says if this card is about to summon, draw one card. So, you know, it's not the best hit off of a Reasoning or a Monster Gate, but drawing one card can draw you deeper into combos, and so it is good to include here. It also is a light for our Chaos Monsters, of which we're playing two Chaos Sorcerer and Black Lizard Soldier Envoy of the Beginning. These are both two very good monsters. They don't trigger the Reasoning or Monster Gate hits, so, you know, you just mill past them and keep going. Um, and these guys can be very good at just, you know, banishing your opponent's monsters, getting in for a ton of damage in the case of BLS, and just being like big beat sticks that are a bit hard for your opponent to out. So I like these. They can also fuel dimension fusion plays, which are very fun. So basically, like, if you banish a light and dark from grave, maybe a dark fusion chaos and like a sacred crane, uh, then you can dimension fusion those out, get a draw off sacred crane, get a spell back off of dark fusion chaos, and that is very nice. For our other hits off of Reasoning or Monster Gate, besides Dark Ninja and Chaos, which is just a very powerful 2800 attack point monster that gets you back any spell from Grave, which you likely will have a bunch of because you're milling them off Monster Gate and Reasoning, uh, we have Blowback Dragon, which is basically a level 6 2300 attack machine that can potentially pop a card on your opponent's side of the field, so that can be very good. And we also have Jinzo, which is a 2400 attack point machine, level 6 dark, uh, that negates all traps on the field, which is very good at insulating your OTK pushes. Now, since we are playing so many machines, I did debate playing a limited removal in this deck. I ultimately decided against it because I feel like having more consistent cards like, you know, right, Geki Breaks or something like that is a bit better than just going all in on the OTKs, especially because if you set up like a big Fusilier or Jinzo or etc., uh, it is very difficult for your opponent to out. So most of the time you won't need the limiter because you'll be able to win in a couple turns anyways. Going on to these spells, uh, the spells are mainly just the power spells plus, you know, more consistency-based spells. Uh, we've got card destruction to draw deeper into our deck, draw deeper into combo, potentially set up our graveyard with things like Demok to bring back off Premat and Call. 
Uh, we got Change of Heart as well to take control of our opponent's monsters, use those for Monster Gate or one of our tribute monsters here. We got Coffee and Force of Sentry as hand rips. We got Dimension Fusion, that I mentioned, for certain combos. We got Triple Giant Tornade. This can be used to bounce back your opponent's spells and traps. Also, it can pair very well with Premature Burial. As you activate Premature Burial, get a monster on field, go for Tornade, bounce back that pre get a mon another monster off the pre -mat. And since you are playing very big monsters, uh, that generally will be a good combo. We've also got Triple Monster Gate, Triple Reasoning. These are the sort of heart and soul of the deck. Reasoning is in a very interesting position in this format because most of the time people are just going to call eight because, you know, Dark and Chaos is so powerful to get out. And every other monster in your deck is not an eight. So that's very good odds on the Reasoning. Although if you do hit a Democ, it is good to sort of have a backup plan uh, if you miss off Reasoning. But, um, you know, oftentimes you can construct your turns in a way that you minimize the chances of that being disastrous for you. We also have an MST here uh, to sort of clear away your opponent back row we're choosing not to play heavy storm in this deck even though heavy storm is legal because we got the three tornade and i think tornade is generally better than um you know heavy storm because it bounces back your pre-mounts also i like the reactivity of mst so you can use this on like a snatch deal to stop your opponent from taking your monsters and it's very good in that regard as well we also got painful choice to set up our graveyard this can also be used to sort of get rid of the monsters we don't want to hit off of a monster gate uh, which is very sort of a funny application of this card. Um, we've got Pot of Greed to draw deeper in our deck. Pre-Mat, as I mentioned before. Triple Scapegoat, this can pair very well with Monster Gate. And given that there aren't the sort of complete board wipes like Red Geki and Dark Hole in this format, uh, this card can be a lot better than it would be in formats past. I mean, there is Torrential Tribute, which is something to consider when you're going for a Scapegoat. Um, but, you know, there's only one Torrential Tribute in this format, so it's not really as big of a deal. Uh, next up, we got Snatch Deal to take control of our opponent's monster, just like Change of Heart, and potentially tribute them off for Monster Gate or our tribute monsters. Uh, we got an Upstart Goblin, lastly, to draw deeper in our deck. This does give our opponent a thousand more life points, but given the big nature of our monsters here, I don't really think that's big, that big of a deal. Uh, for the traps, we got Call the Haunt to revive monsters from our graveyard. We get Triple Ray Geki Break to both pitch monsters from our hand to the graveyard and pop cards on the field. So if we do draw like a dead Democ, we can pitch it with Regeki Break, get more access to it. And since Monster Reborn isn't in this format, we don't have to worry about our opponent using our Democ against us. Next up, we got Ring of Destruction, just a very, very good way to get more damage on board or just deal with problematic monsters our opponent may have. And also a Torrential Tribute to clear away our opponent's monsters. For the side deck, the side deck here is a bit of a meme. I just sort of have a Magical Scientist side deck here. Uh, because basically the idea is, is that like if we lose, we side into Scientist FDK and potentially just win through that. That. So, you know, this is just typical science stuff to case stuff. We got triple catapult turtle, a scientist, triple last will, triple walk, uh, double reload, and triple spell reproduction. In terms of what you're siding out for that, since you're going for the FDK, what I generally do is I side out like pretty much all the traps. I side out all the scapegoats. So that's nine cards so far. Um, I often side out like some of the fusiliers, the blowback dragon, and the Jinzo as well. Um, and then beyond that, you can also side out like Confi or Forceful if you're going all in the hand rip or not in the hand rip on the FDK. Uh, or you could also just keep these in as a backup plan if your FDK goes wrong inside of something like Dim Fuse, which doesn't really come up as often in the case of um, the Scientist FDK. So, uh, you know, there are flexibility in terms of like siding into this sort of strategy if you want to do that. But I do think that going forward into the future, I wouldn't use this as a side deck. This is a very funny meme, true. Um, but, like, given the science step decay rate is probably around 60% at max, um, you know, I don't really think it's consistent enough of a game board to uh, to actually go into, or a game plan to go into. So, yeah. I, but, you know, I kept it in for this video, and we'll see how it actually does in the games here. Uh, for the fusion deck, it's just sort of like the standard toolbox fusion deck that you might find in this format. We are playing scientists, so, you know, good to consider. Scientists could also be played in the main deck um, if you wanted to, as it's a pretty good uh, target to bring off of like a gate or a reasoning. Also, it can get fused monsters on field for you to gate off. So like magical science definitely isn't terrible. Uh, I just feel like it's l not really as high value a hit as you might like. Um, but you know, it is definitely something you can include. But uh, yeah, so you know, basically the way the science FDK works is, you know, we're playing the monster gate reasoning engine to try and bring out scientists and turtle. Uh, we got wills to, you know, sort of bring out these d directly from deck. We got mystic walks uh, to give us life points to pay more for scientists and also fuel will plays. We got reload to shuffle back things in the deck and we got spell reproduction to get back spells from grave to pull off our combo. Uh, but that's going to do it for the deck breakdown here. We've got a lot of very exciting games to dive into for this deck. So without further ado, let's dig in.
Okay, first game here, we got a game against Barcode. A, I, actually, I'm not sure if I featured them on the channel, but they're a very, very good duelist in these retro formats. So always have to have them on the channel. And uh, we will lose the Rock, Paper, Scissors there. So we will be going second, but honestly, this deck doesn't mind if it goes second. And this is a pretty great hand going second. Our opponent's going to go for Pot of Greed there. Uh, they're going to set two pass back to us, and that is perfectly fine by us. We do draw Jinzo, which is kind of unfortunate, um, as we don't really want all these tribute monsters in hand, but we do have reasoning. So they're going to call eight, and we hit a four. Okay, that's pretty good. So we hit the four. We get to draw here as well. And now we've got fuel for our monster gate, so that's very nice. I'm going to think about exactly what to do here, because instead of going for Monster Gate, we could just, like, go for Blowback Dragon or Jinzo or something like that, and just shut off their back row, potentially. We could all just MST their back row to insulate our plays, because we might have an OTK line here. So we're going to MST their back row, uh, and summon out the Blowback Dragon, try and pop their set there. So, we will indeed, uh, what are we going to hit? We hit... Okay, uh, so we got one head. We got two heads! Okay, so we get to pop their card there, and because the, we do just have an empty board to attack into, I'm going to go for Monster Gate here. This may seem a little bit weird, but the reason I do this is because if I hit Demok, we just win the game, um, and, you know, if I hit, like, Fusiliate, that's also really good because I get out, like, Black Cluster Soldier um, plus Fusiliate, so that's 5,800 damage, and it's a bit hard to deal with, um, so I like going for that sort of thing. So I'm going to go for the Gate. Unfortunately, we hit the Crane, so that's kind of rough, but we do get a draw off this, so that's nice. We draw Card Destruction, which is really good. So we could just extend even further with card destruction if we want to. Um, and I think, like, in hindsight, this is probably a little bit too greedy. Because I don't really have the most ways to actually, like, super capitalize off this card destruction and actually, like, get lethal damage here. Um, so I think in hindsight, I shouldn't have gone for card destruction. It just fuels our opponent's graveyard if they're playing chaos stuff. Um, and it didn't seem like our opponent had, like, too, too much to go with. Um... But uh, yeah, I'm just going to go for the card destruction here anyways. They pitch 5, and they did hit pitch a uh, BLS, so that's kind of nice for us. Um, but we don't really draw the best here. We draw Raigeki Break and TT, so that's not bad. We can set the uh, Raigeki Break to pop one of their cards. But um, it's not really the best either. So our opponent's going to think about this for a bit. They're going to bring out a Breaker here. They're going to try and pop our set. We could potentially use the Raigeki Break on the Breaker. But uh, I don't really see a way that they win the game here. I mean, if they've got another Chaos Monster in hand, maybe they can do that. Like, Chaos Monster plus, like, Snap Steel or Change of Heart on the BLS would be really bad for us. So, you know, I guess there are some lines that get them lethal this turn. But I figured, like, you know, it's not worth pitching the TT. Because if they can break apart this board, I want the TT for later. So... Uh, I'm going to think about this, and ultimately I'm just going to let the break go. Unfortunately, they have Forceful, so that will shuffle back our TT. And they do indeed have a Chaos Monster. They're going to bring out Chaos Sork, Smashing Ground, our BLS, and get in for 2300. So, quite unfortunate. Um, yeah, I think I honestly should have just, you know, not gone for card destruction. But, you know, you never know these things until it's too late. Uh, I could have saved card destruction for, like, this turn potentially. Um, you know, because I I'm in a bad spot now. Uh, clearly. Uh, but also, I wouldn't have fueled their grave, you know, with card destruction as well. So, yeah, I think that it would have ultimately been right. But we're going to go for Snatch on the Chaos Sork. Uh, oh, also, I forgot to mention the Painful Choice. We gave them TT because that's easiest to play around, I think. And also, they pop their own board um, if they do that. Since they only sent two Sakus, I didn't want to attack into the Breaker. I just wanted to banish it with the Chaos Sork. I felt like that was a bit safer. Uh, although you could argue that given that we know about the return, um, you know, it's not really the best to give them more cards banished. But uh, if they go for a return, we probably lose anyway, so I don't really think it matters that much. But uh, they gain a 1,000 off the Snatch Deal. And they're going to figure out what to do. They're going to uh, change of heart and uh, banish Chaos Arc with its own effect. Uh, and then they're going to go for Blade Knight attacking in for 2k. We draw Call the Haunted, which is really good for us. We're going to set that pass back to our opponent. Uh, they're just going to attack in for 2k. Uh, we are going to think about this, and we are ultimately going to take it. The reason I do this is because I don't want them, like, MSTing our call. They haven't actually used up an MST yet, and they do have MST in hand. Um, then I don't want them, like, chaining MST to our call. I'd rather call in the end phase. I think that's a little bit better. Um, but they're just going to pass back to us. We draw Fusilia, which is pretty good. We're going to go for call here, bring back Jinzo. That should shut off their back row. Uh, and then we're going to go for Fusilia. Fusilia doesn't really do much. Like, it's just 1,400 attack. But 1,400 attack puts our opponent on a clock. So we're going to pass back to our opponent. They are going to set one, pass back to us, 
We draw another Fusiliate, and that should be the end of the game. We bring that out and attack into their set with the Jinzo in case it's another Gravekeeper's Spy. And uh, it looks like our opponent's just going to scoop it up, and that will be the end of the game. So even though I think, you know, we didn't really do the best play with the card destruction, we were able to recover uh, because the deck does have a lot of late-game bombs. You know, that's another thing. If you do go for your combo and you can't kill your opponent there and they manage to bounce back, you do have a lot of, like, late-game bombs that you can use to sort of get back into the game and uh, turn the game around. So that's another advantage of this deck. But uh, we uh, did manage to win that game, so we will be going for uh, second here, uh, which suits this deck fine. Uh, they're going to go for Painful Choice, send uh, five good ones. This is a bit of a tricky set to send. I think what I want to give them is the Kaiku here. The reason for this is because I can Snatch Steal Kaiku, and that's pretty good. Um, whereas the others are like mainly sets or like things that you know are a bit tricky to deal with. So I'm just going to give them the Kaiku. Uh, they're going to set one, fire a sword here, pass back to us. We're going to go for Reasoning. Uh, they call eight, and uh, we managed to... Do we hit here? Uh, we do, oh man, we're going through a lot of our deck. That's always scary. So one of the downsides to playing so a few monsters that a reason your monster gate can just go through your entire deck. If you're just left with monsters at the end of the deck, then that is really rough. So we do hit a sacred crane. We get to draw a card here. Uh, we're going to go for the blowback dragon here, trying to target their set and keep something good. Uh, and luckily we do indeed hit heads and we will hit, oh, that's tails. Uh, will we hit another heads? We, ah, uh, we don't hit those. So we're just going to set a scapegoat pass back to our opponent. Um, no need to really go for the true nade here because we want to save true nade for when we're getting really aggressive. But our opponent's going to go for forceful. They're going to send back a snatch shield, which is a pretty good card here. Uh, and then they're going to go for MST on our back row. It's scapegoat, so we're just going to chain that um, and get those four goat tokens out there. We do still have monster gates in deck. Uh, they're going to go for smashing, get rid of blowback. They're going to get back a forceful with the Magician of Faith there. And they're going to bring out a Kaiku, popping two of our cards. We draw another Scapegoat. And uh, I think I make a misplay here. I think I should have gone Scapegoat Trunade as the set. Um, as we do know that they have forceful. So, you know, if we set Scapegoat Trunade, then we potentially bluff that we don't have Scapegoat set when they go for forceful here. But, um... Yeah, I think it's fine. We choose not to set the Fusiliate because we got multiple scapegoats here in the back row uh, to block an offensive push. And we want to save the Fusiliate for if, you know, we need it uh, for like a monster gate or like a variety of other situations. Uh, they're going to attack into our two tokens there. They're going to set one pass back to us. And then in the end phase, we're going to go for the scapegoat in case we draw one of our monster gates. This will make it live. Uh, we draw a Fusiliate again. I did check the log. We did shuffle our tech. So, you know. Uh, it's just kind of unfortunate how that worked out. And we're going to pass back to our opponent. So the swords will expire. They're going to go for Rota here, get out a DD Warrior Lady, and that will be able to eat three of the tokens here. So since our monster gates will be live if we draw them, I don't really feel the need to, you know, activate scapegoat in the end phase here. We draw Snastio, which is pretty good as well. We can sort of clear their entire board. Uh, we're going to think about this, and we are going to go for the True Nade, as, you know, there are some annoying traps that can really mess up our day here. Uh, so we're going to go for True Nade. And send all those back. We're going to go for Snatch on the Kaiku. We're going to attack over the Magician of Faith. Getting in for 11. And attack over the DD Warrior Lady. Now they've got a choice here. They can choose to banish the DD Warrior Lady and the Kaiku. Or they could choose not to do that. So they're going to think about this. We banish the Spy and the Magician of Faith just in case. Uh, and then they're going to banish the Kaiku and DD Warrior Lady. Indeed. We're going to set this scapegoat here. Pass back to our opponent. And uh, they're going to bring out a Blade Knight. Blade Knight will be able to hit over our Fusilia, getting in for 600 damage here. Um, but we're still not the worst spot. We drop Pot of Greed as well, which we are going to go for. I think we could have potentially saved it um, because we still have two Monster Gates left in deck. If we draw into Demok off this pot, um, then that could be bad. But really, the only thing that punishes that if like the top deck, if the top card is Monster Gate and the next card is Demok. So, you know, unfortunately, the top monster was Demok and the next monster card was Monster Gate. So it wouldn't matter here either way, I think. And uh, we're going to think about this a bit. We could Monster Gate here. Uh, but looking at what we have left in deck, I think the only things we really have left in deck are Sacred Cranes, Fusiliers, and a Jinzo, I guess. So uh, if we count how many there are, there are two Fusiliers, two Sacred Cranes, and one Jinzo. Because I didn't change anything in siding because our side deck is fully equipped for um, Science of FTK. Another downside to playing the Science of FTK side deck is that your side deck is fully equipped for it. So you don't really have options to bring in against various matches. So... Five of the uh, seven cards remaining in our deck are monsters, and of those monsters, we don't necessarily want to hit Sacred Crane. So we could just wait until we draw into Sacred Cranes before going for Gate. 
Um, but, you know, of the monsters left in our deck, there are three we do want to hit, so we are slightly favored in those odds. So we do just go for the gate here and hope we get lucky. Unfortunately, we do not. We get a Sacred Crane, but if we draw into Jinzo off this, then that's still pretty good. Unfortunately, we draw into Fusilier, so not really the best for us. We do just set the Fusilier. Um, I think I could have saved it in hand, because again, we got the Scapegoat here. Um, so yeah, I probably should have saved Fusilier in hand, but it doesn't really matter here. They're going to attack over the Fusilier, set one pass back to us. We draw a Jinzo here, so we can summon that out, attack over their Blade Knight, and feel pretty good about that. So we are going to do that. Oh, I think that's why I set the Fusilier, because I wanted a Tribute Summonable Monster um, in case I drew the Jinzo. So uh, we attack over the Blade Knight with the Jinzo. They take four. Uh, we'll pass back to them. And they're going to think about this. And they are going to flip up DD Warly and attack into Jinzo. That is really rough for us. Uh, we will lose the Jinzo. They'll set one pass back to us. We go for Scapegoat here, uh, bringing out four in the end phase, just in case we draw into a Monster Gate. Um, we draw a Sacred Crane, which is not a Monster Gate. So we are going to think about this, and we are ultimately just going to bring it up, because I feel like we have to go aggressive at this point. Um, we don't really have the best draws left in our deck. We have, like, Monster Gate plus Fusiliers. Yeah, I think Monster Gate plus two Fusiliers, which is... Or no, we've got Mon no, Monster Gate something else in Fusilier, but I, I worked it out at the time. We do not have the best cards here, so I'm just going to bring this out, try and get aggressive. Unfortunately, our opponent does have TT, so they'll wipe our entire board. Um, but, you know, we're not really worried about life points right now. We're worried about deck size, which is potentially something that can come up. We draw Fusilier, so we're going to bring that out, attack in for 14, um, and pass back to them. They're going to uh, Fire Ace Snatch, deal, taking control of our Fusilier. So we do lose 14 here, but we'll gain 1,000 next turn. They're going to set one pass back to us. We draw MST, so, you know, might as well just fire it. So we are going to do that. Take control of the Fusilier. Uh, attack over their set there. It is a great keeper spy. Um, and, you know, that brings out another spy. So uh, we, we've lost the game at this point, but we might as well just play it out. Get a little bit more information on our opponent's deck, especially because we're just going into Science FDK uh, game three. But we draw Monster Gate as the last card in deck, and that will be the end of the game. So... You know, not really the best uh, for us there, but that can happen if you sort of get unlucky with your gates or reasonings. Not necessarily in terms of what you hit, but in terms of what you don't hit. Uh, if you just go through your entire deck off them, which is a possibility, then that's really bad for you. But, um, you know, that doesn't really happen all too often. So, you know, it's not really the most likely situation. But, yeah, uh, we decided into the science stuff DK, and we, oh, this is a stinker of a hand. This is really bad. Um, this is one of those hands that you do not want to get when you go for the Scientist FTK. Uh, we're going to go for Compi at least to hopefully stem the bleeding a little bit. Um, we see they've got a pretty good hand here. We want to deprive them of the Sork, um, because first of all, they can't pre it back. Second of all, you know, they've got Light and Dark set up for later. And third of all, you know, they got Return, so Return can bring it back, whatever they banish. So, uh, I'm going to get rid of the Sork, cut off most of their hand there. And, uh, then I'm just going to set Spell Repro, set a few silly pass back to them. Um, they're going to set one pass back to us. We draw Mystic Walk, which is okay. You know, not the worst thing in the world. We can use it on the Fusilier to gain life points, at least. We're going to set that pass back to our opponent. Um, you might think I'm playing a bit fast and loose with just two spells in hand, but I do have the spell reproduction on field, so, you know, I can always use that for it. They're going to go for Forceful there, send back a, a BLS, uh, assuming that the spell repros are dead, and also BLS is a very good card. Uh, they're going to flip up the Spy, uh, bring out another Spy, and they sort of have the read, probably, that, you know, we're on the Science Step DK, um, and so we don't really have any real back row here. They're going to attack in with the Tribe. We're actually going to go for Mystic Walk on the Fusilier, just to gain life. Um, just to give value off that. And maybe I should have saved it for, like, when I had a last will play. But, you know, if I drew the last will here, then I don't have a monster. So it doesn't really matter either way. Uh, they're going to set one pass back to us. We draw Reasoning, which is really good. We're going to go for Reasoning here. Uh, they're going to think about that. And they are just going to call one. Okay, so they're trying to hit the Scientist. We do hit Demox, so that is really good for us. We get to get a spell back from Grave. But we don't really have the best spells in Grave to go with that. We could just go for, like, Reasoning. Uh, to try and get out, like, another monster here. We could go for Painful. Uh, Painful, we send a bunch of powerful spells. We use Spell Reaper to get back what are spells we need. But, uh, realistically, there isn't really a good option for setting up the FDK from that. Like, we could send, like, Premat plus, like, Catapult Turtles or Scientists, um, but then we just Spell Repro back the Premat, and then we only get one of our two options there. So that's not really the best. We could just go for Pot or Gate or something like that. Um... But it's definitely a tough choice there. Uh, I think that we do just go for Reasoning, because I feel like that's the best option for us remaining. We're going to go for that Reasoning. Uh, send four, or they call four. 
and uh, we hit a, oh man, they hit a four, so that's kind of unfortunate for us. We have more spells in Grave now, so we have a little bit more options here. Uh, reload is useless to us because that'll be the only card in hand. We could go for Gate, that's a guaranteed hit. Um, but, you know, that's just one hit, so it's not really the best. We could go for another Reasoning as well. A lot of different options here. Um, we could also just go for Pot of Grief off the Spell Repros, which might just be the best option overall. Um, so we're going to go for the Spell Repro. Uh, pitching two spells, adding Pot of Greed. Uh, and then we're going to go for the Pot of Greed, drawing two. And we draw pre at Last Will. That's pretty good, but it doesn't quite do the combo that we want here. Um, because, you know, we could... Uh, I think probably the best choice is pre that Crane, getting a draw and seeing if that helps. But it's very unlikely that we actually set this up. So um, we're thinking, we're, we're trying to math a bit here. Um, just figuring out exactly what we can do. But uh, I don't really think there's a good option. The best option, like, here would potentially be, like, a uh, pre-map back, crane, attack into tribe uh, after activating last. We'll get out, like, you know, either scientist or turtle and trying to do stuff that way. But realistically, that doesn't quite work. Um, doesn't get us the most damage. So we're going to go for pre-map targeting crane just to see if the draw helps us out here. Um, and we draw a few cilia, which is not really the best. I mean, we haven't normal summoned this turn. So what we could do is we could activate last will, uh, tribute off both our monsters, go for a few cilia, but then we don't really have a good option to bring out. I guess we could bring out scientist and, you know, eat their entire board, but I think we can eat their entire board anyway, or most of their board at least. Um, so yeah, it's not really the best for us here. We do think about this for quite a bit. And we are just going to bring out the Fusilier uh, as a normal monster, or as just a 1400 monster. We attack over the tribe. I think this is actually a misplay. I think I should have crashed the crane with the tribe there. Um, and the reason for this is I don't want the tribe banished because they can just bring it back off return, which we do know they have. So this was actually a misplay from us. Um, but uh, it might not matter in the end. I think we're in a really bad spot either way. But we'll see what they do here. We set the last will. Uh, they're going to go for Shining Angel here, uh, attack into our Fusilier, so that is a downside to going for the Fusilier there. Uh, they get out a DD Warly, they banish the Democ there, um, and then they don't quite have enough to kill us if they go for a turn now, but um, they do still eat our board here. So even if we had banished the Spy, I don't think it really would have mattered that much. They're going to go for Premat here in main two, bring back a Shining Angel, and uh, they're going to pass back to us. So we draw Fusilier, so what we could do here is potentially go for Lost Will, craft Fusilier into their Shining Angel. But then what do we get out? Nothing really uh, matters here. I mean, I guess we could go for Scientist and then bring out Restrict and then suck up whatever they bring out off Shining. That is something we can do, but I don't really think it's the best. Um, and then, you know, they've got Return as follow-up, so I don't really think it works out the best for us here. But it would be something we could do. We're going to set the Fusilier instead, pass back to our opponent. Um, they're going to bring out Zambira here, hit over the Fusilier with the Shining Angel, hit over the Crane with the Zambira, and now our last will is extra dead. Um, they're going to set one pass back to us. We draw Mystic Walk, which, you know, isn't really the best for us, but if we had saved our Fusilier, it would have potentially allowed us to do something here. Um, but we're just going to set that as is, pass back to our opponent. They're going to bring, or they're just going to attack him with Shining Angel, deal 14, and then return is actually lethal damage. Um, so this will be 3,100 that they're bringing back off those two. And yeah, that'll be the end of the game. Now, if we had banished a spy instead of the tribe, then, you know, this wouldn't have been quite as bad for us, but they could have also pre matted back the tribe instead of the Shining Angel. So there were other lines they could have done instead. And uh, I think we were probably losing this game three either way. And this is why I'm not the biggest fan of Scientist FDK, because, like, if you bring it in, you're generally already down a game. So you don't necessarily want to risk a 50-50 on this. You probably want to just, you know, play a more consistent deck uh, that has a higher chance of winning. So that's why I'm not the biggest fan of it. But, you know, this was that game. And uh, this wasn't the only game I played with Barcode. We actually played another game afterwards. So let's dive into that now. Okay, we got a rematch against Barcode here. Uh, we're playing the same decks. It's just a straight-up rematch. So uh, we're going to be diving into it. And as a reminder, if you enjoy this sort of gameplay, uh, definitely subscribe to the channel. I'm planning on releasing a lot more Warrior content. I think this format is really cool. And then we'll be going beyond it into GOAT and further. So I'll look forward to that. Uh, we're going to go for Reasoning now, though, and they do indeed call the 8 correctly. Uh, not really the best odds of that happening, but it is what it is. We could have potentially ordered this differently with, like, Sacred Crane, then Monster Gate, but you generally want to go Reasoning first because that gives your opponent the least amount of information about what you might hit off Reasoning. Um, so, you know, generally that is what you want to do. So 
Um, I think that this still was the correct play. We just got a little bit punished um, by hitting the Democ there. But we still do have the Crane plus Gate if we want to go for it. We actually choose not to go for it. And the reason for this is that we've got Scapegoat, which is a very good protective card here. And that will give us Gate Fodder next turn anyways. So it doesn't really matter for us. Um, and I think that this is probably the safer outcome than just giving our opponent a board to break. So they're going to go for Heavy. We've got the Scapegoat here. So that will give us four tokens. And this is why we chose not to set the ring as well. We can just save the ring for later for dealing that last bit of damage. They're going to attack in with Kaiku. They set one pass back to us. And since this might be a big turn, I think I might go for the MST. If I do just go for the MST on the background, in case it's something like Torrential or something like that. We go for Reasoning here. They call four. We hit a Jinzo. So actually the MST was not necessary. We're going to go for Gate here. Um, and we hit a Fusiliate. So that's going to be a 2,800 attack point monster. Feel pretty good about that. We're going to bring out Crane. Attack over the Kaiku for 1,000, and then attack directly for 4,000 more. So this will deal 5,000 of them. Uh, unfortunately, they're not quite in ring range. We're just slightly off of that, but we'll set the ring anyways, just as a sort of way to deal with what they might have if they get rid of Jinzo here. Uh, they're going to go for Pot, draw two, and they're going to go for Snatch on our Fusiliate. They're going to summon a Blade Knight set two to buff up that uh, Blade Knight to um, 2000, and then they're going to hit over our Jinzo with the Cecilia, hit over the Crane with the Blade Knight here. Pass back to us. Uh, we draw Upstart Goblin. This is actually a bit of a thinker because with Upstart, that gets them to 4000, which, you know, if they bring out BLS, which they can't right now, but if they do later, it, like once Blade Knight goes to grave, it's nice being able to kill them exactly with the uh, ring on the BLS. So, um, you know, we do debate this, and ultimately we choose uh, to just set the Upstart, pass back to them. Um, because, you know, we're not at risk of dying. We're still, like, pretty good in, in the grand scheme of things. So we don't really need to, like, dig deeper yet. Um, but, you know, we've got the upstart as backup later. They're going to set one pass back to us. We draw Fusilier, which really isn't the best here. Uh, and I'm kind of worried about that set being something like Magician of Faith. So I think now is the time to actually go for the upstart. Uh, we go for upstart here, draw into BLS. So actually that is just the end of the game, really. Uh, we're going to banish to bring out the BLS here. And then we're going to think about this a bit. We are going to banish with the BLS, getting rid of the Magician of Faith. Um, this is actually a major misplay on our part. We realize it right after, but it's a misplay because we got Dimension Fusion. So, you know, that Magician of Faith will just come back anyways. Um, so I think this was bad, but what I wanted to do was just sort of like uh, use Pryo to banish a card um, before they could do anything, then go for Dim Fuse and get back Trunade to get rid of their back row. The BLS is kind of just testing for, um, you know, if they've got TT or not. But uh, maybe this was a little bit too greedy. Um, but yeah, I just go for Dimension Fusion here. I shouldn't have done this realistically. But um, yeah, we do know that they do play Saku. So I think that not attacking in right now is the best choice. I think dim, dim Fusing back the Dark Vision of Chaos is correct no matter what happens. Um, but yeah, I think that Banishing before going for Dim Fuse was definitely a misplay. So we are going to bring back a Crane and a Demok. Demok will get us back a card from Grave. Um, and we'll get back the True Nade. Um, and also the Crane draws the card. They're going to go for TT here. Uh, I'm pretty sure the way the chains work is that Crane and Demok automatically happen. I believe Demok does target. I need to check the original errata. Um, but I'm pretty sure it does target in the original version. So then the TT will be chain link three. Pop the entire board here. Um, but if it doesn't target, then that's really good for us. Because then, you know, they go for TT here. Um, we just get back like Dim Fuse. Maybe bring back Demok again. And that's still very good for us. So... They do go for TT here, get rid of the entire board, though. Um, we do have Fusilier, so we can summon that out attack in for 14, get them down to 26. Uh, and then, actually, we could have gone for Ring on our BLS and then gone for Fusilier to try and win the game that way. So, actually, that probably would have been the correct choice. But if they had, did have a Saku in their back... Well, no, because we had Trunade for their back row. So, yeah, that would have been the correct answer to do it that way. Uh, but I didn't see that line. I think, ultimately, we still win the game here. Uh, they're going to bring a Zambira attack into our Fusilier. We're going to just go for ring on the Zambira, um, you know, dropping them down to 500 life points. They're going to go for smashing, so they do have a way to deal with Fusilier. So uh, all we need to do is deal that 500 damage. We've got a uh, scapegoat as a protective measure. We also have Raigeki break in case they bring out a set monster. They're going to bring out that set monster. We have call. Uh, we are going to go for Raigeki break on the set monster, pitching the Trinade that they knew about. And we're going to set this call pass back to them. They're going to go for Breaker here, and we could just immediately fire Call once they summon Breaker, but effectively it's going to be the same outcome either way. Um, so they're going to go for Breaker on our Call. We are going to bring back Jinzo in response, and uh, that will 
you know, shut off their traps, but also it means that when the call is popped, Legion just stays on the field. They're going to go for Painful here, and I'm not quite sure what five they can send to actually get them out of this situation. And checking their deck, they admit defeat, so clearly there wasn't a good set of five there. But you got to go for Painful just in case you do manage to see it. Um, but we will be going second here as we did win game one. And uh, this is a very good hand. This is this is an incredibly good hand. Wow. This is super good. They're going to go for Confi, so that will decrease the quality of our hand a little bit. They're going to send Reasoning here. Uh, but we do have ways to sort of get our combos online with Painful Choice sending, like, you know, Triple Crane, Double Fusilier, and then you just get one to hand, go for Monster Gate. So, um, yeah, they send Reasoning, which I do think is probably correct here. But we go for Painful. Uh, they are going to let that go through. We send Forceful Confi, uh, Crane, Crane, Crane. And the reason we do this instead of just sending uh, Crane, 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 and then Fusilier, Fusilier, is because now that we've got Scapegoat for our Monster Gate, uh, we can sort of bide our time a little bit. So uh, I feel like we can get the hand rips out of deck because these are kind of dead draws later in the game if we draw them. Um, so I feel like it's ultimately fine to do this. So they give us Confi because they know about the Monster Gate, and now we get a hand rip. So that's sort of like the dilemma we put them in as well because they know about the gate and they don't want us to use the gate. So, you know, that basically forces them into giving us a hand rip. So, uh, I feel very good about going for this hand rip. Uh, we're going to go for that and see that they've got a Kaiku, Snapsteel, Change of Heart, and Return. That is a bit of a tricky hand to choose from. I mean, we don't take Return because they don't have any setup for that yet. Uh, I feel like Snapsteel we can get rid of right with Red Geki Break, so that's not really that big of a deal. Kaiku we got the scapegoat for. I think Change might be the best choice. Um, but we do just go for Kaiku in case they have a way to, like, snipe the snake, uh, the scapegoat in the end phase. Uh, because we do want our uh, lights in grave in case we draw into a Chaos Monster. So I do just send the Kaiku. That might be the incorrect play. Um, but I'm also just trying to sort of, like, OTK them anyways. So, you know, if I can pull off the OTK, then the change and stuff won't matter. They've got Call of the Haunted anyway, so they'll be able to get back that Kaiku attack in. Uh, but luckily we do have the scapegoat here. So we'll be able to go for that. Getting out four tokens. And they will indeed attack into one, giving us less gate fuel. They're going to bring out Zimbira as well to sort of reinforce themselves and pass back to us. We've got gate. Uh, so we could potentially snatch steal one of their monsters, then go for gate. But these tokens don't really do anything on their own. And we'd rather go for snatch steal uh, later when we're trying to push for damage. So we're going to go for the gate here. Hit a Fusilier right away. Uh, not the best card to hit here, but also not the worst. Uh, we're going to attack into the Kaiku there. Set Regeki Break pass back to our opponent. We got Regeki Break for the Snatch Shield, so that's why we do that. They're going to go for Snatch Shield here, and we're just going to let that go through for now, um, because based on what we know of their hand, it didn't seem like they had any tribute cards to like bring out off this. Uh, they could be playing like Zaborg. Uh, we did see that game one, I believe, so you know maybe I should have just gone for the break on the Snatch, but then they've got change anyway, so it doesn't really matter here. Um, so I'm going to go for it in battle, and uh, they're just going to crash in to the uh, Fusilia with the Shining Angel there, bring out a DD Warrior Lady, uh, and hit into our Fusilia to banish those, and now they've got their return online. They'll attack into a token with Zimbira, set one, pass back to us, we draw Upstart, which we will indeed go for, uh, because we do really want to draw a way to deal with this. We draw BLS, which is really good, but unfortunately we don't have any Darks in the grave because they banished our Fusilier. So it's not quite the best for us. We don't want to snap seal their um, Zimbira because that's really bad for us. They can't, We can't attack in with it. Uh, it doesn't really do anything on field, so... They're going to go for Rota here. They bring out another DD Warrior Lady here, and they will be able to get in for 1,500. So, you know, we're sort of bleeding out life points a little bit, um, but I still think we're in a pretty good spot overall. So they're going to pass back to us. We draw Pot of Greed. That puts us in a really good spot. Uh, and we draw Call plus Gate. That's really good for us. We're going to go for a Snatch on the DD Warrior Lady because we got Monster Gate to pair with it. Uh, we're going to go for the Gate. And the reason we chose DD Warrior Lady instead of Zimbira is because we don't want to get that Banish for the return. So we'd rather just take it and put it in Grave. We hit a Jinzo, which is really good for us. We attack over their Zimbira there, um, dealing 700, and then main two. Uh, we are just going to set the Call Pass back to our opponent. They are going to set one, pass back to us. We draw a Dimension Fusion, which is really cool. We could go for that, but if we do that, then, you know, um, they get back DD Warly, so it's not really the best for us here. So we'll save that for later. We're going to attack in for 2400 with the Jinzo, and then they're going to pass back to us, or we're going to pass back to them, that is. Uh, they're going to think about this. We They're going to set one more, and that feels really good for us. We draw a ring, which is very nice. We're just going to attack in with Jinzo. Um... They've got the book, so that will stop the Jinzo. But we do have this call here to bring back a crane, get him for 16, and win that way, potentially. So they're going to go for book on our Jinzo. We go for call to bring back the crane. Uh, and that should be the end of the game. Uh, unless they've got another sort of trap that they can use here. They do have a turn, so actually that will keep them alive for one more turn. Um, 
But yeah, we don't really need to attack in to the DD Border Lady because Return banishes all the monster special summon by at the end of the turn. So we're just going to set the ring, pass back to them because ring should be lethal here. Uh, we can use the ring just right away on the crane. But yeah, they just draw and they, they don't have a way to win here. Yeah, they just have the change of heart and the forceful. They actually mentioned that they had a very interesting line to get very, very close to lethal, or at least tying. Um, but they were 100 damage off. So what they had was um, they could go for change of heart on the Jinzo, um, attack him with Jinzo for 24, book the Jinzo, and then return to bring back the Warrior attack in for 15. And then they had ring for the Warrior Lady. So that would actually get them 100 off lethal. But we had the call anyway, so we could have called back this crane, stopped for 1500 attack. And been fine there but they could have gone for ring on our crane though and so that would have been awkward because then we would have had to ring the dd warly so actually you know that would have actually won them the game there uh or not won them the game but caused this to be a draw but unfortunately they were 100 off so didn't quite work out but uh that's gonna do it for our matches against barcode these were really really sick and i really like chaos return as a deck i'm definitely gonna feature it on the channel as well because there's been a lot of experimentation with this deck and i think it's really cool but this is one of the only games that i played with this deck let's dive in to some more matches and see how it continues to perform okay we got a game against helios Stride, and we actually played a bunch of matches here so you know i'm not gonna really get into the gritty on the points here because um you know we played a bunch of matches so uh, I'm just going to try and, you know, get through this a bit quickly just to show you off, like, how the deck works and um, just get some more games here. So I'm not going to be as in-depth, or at least I'll try not to. You know, my natural tendency is to go in-depth, so uh, that might not work out. But they're going to go for a level limit here, uh, set three pass. We could go for Trunade, but no real point to do that because the only follow-up would be Summon Crane attack in for 16. So not really the best for us. Um, but we're going to pass back to them. They bring out an Exiled Force here, uh, which is switched to defense. But, you know, since this is just a fun sort of practice match, I do let them take that back. Um, because, you know, I feel like this is a better test for both decks. Um, we draw another Trunade, so it's good to have sort of insurance uh, in case we want it. They're going to set one. We draw Reasoning, so that's really good. I think it's time to go for the Trunade, since we already have, um, you know, another Trunade as well. So we can go for the Reasoning plays here. Uh, if we miss off Reasoning, or if it's not too aggressive, then... You know, it's unfortunate, but at least we, you know, sort of pull this off and get something going, right? Uh, we hit a Fusilier, so there was lag there, so the, the break was not hit off that. Uh, but we do bring out a uh, Fusilier here. We're going to bring out a Crane. Uh, set 2, because some of these decks do play, like, Morphing Jar. Uh, and then we're going to attack in to their set. It is a Cyber Jar there, so that will pop the entire board. Get out 5 new cards. And uh, those are pretty good 5 on our part. Unfortunately, uh, our opponent also gets a pretty decent set of five. Uh, Rat and Panda will both get on field. They also have Desserts, uh, Barrel, and Painful there. That's kind of unfortunate. Uh, it can potentially set up a lot of damage for us. Uh, but we do have these breaks, or we have this one break here to shut off one of those potentially. So that's something to keep in mind. But uh, they're going to add those all to hand. And they're going to set two. We have the Reasoning, the Snatch Seal, the Ring, and the Pot, and the Premat as well. So this is a very good hand for us as well. Um, main two, we're just going to set the Ring, pass back to our opponent. They are going to flip with the Rat. They're going to set a Bunch here, and then they're going to attack in directly. We're going to go for the Ring on the Rat, because, you know, we're taking that 1400 either way, and this way they don't have the Rat. And then they're going to pass back to us. Since they have five back row set, I don't just want a blind Raigeki break. So I just, you know, let that go through. I guess last turn I also could have Reasoning to get out, like, Jinzo potentially. But they're probably calling six uh, if they, you know, if, if we do go for Reasoning and they do have a big trap play to make. So, yeah, they're going to, um, they're going to think about this and they're going to sequence their plays correctly here. So they're going to go for Secret Barrel, Just Desserts, uh, Secret Barrel, Just Desserts, and then Ojama Trio. Now, if you do the math on this, Ojama Trio gives us three tokens here. So that'll be five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 cards that we have total. So 2,400 off of each of the barrels, so that's 4,800. Uh, 3,000 off the adjusters, so that's 7,800 total. Now, if we go for a Geki Break, pop our Scapegoat, pitch a card, that gets rid of two cards that we have. Um, so that means that we've got only 10 cards on field, which is 2,000 each uh, off the barrels. Um, but it doesn't quite do it for us because that's still 4,000 plus 1,500 each, so that's uh, 7,000 damage. So doesn't quite get us there. So uh, that will indeed be the end of the game. And uh, yeah, I actually mathed incorrectly here. Um, but, you know, 
uh, I just mathed sort of in the other direction, so it doesn't really matter there. So um, I was going to lose that either way. But uh, that's game one. Uh, now, again, as I mentioned before, we do side into Science of FDK. Science of FDK doesn't have the best burn matchup, which is kind of awkward. Um, but you know, it's the side we got. I think that in the future, again, uh, siding into things that can actually deal with awkward decks like this is probably better. Uh, but we're going to go for these scientists here, bring out a super robo lay just as a card to sort of tribute off for monster gate here, uh, send a bunch and hopefully we hit a turtle. If we don't, we still get a turtle, um, from deck with last will. So we do indeed, uh, get out another turtle as well with last will. And, uh, we go for a walk on one of the turtles to gain 2000 and that's more than enough to pull off the FDK. So that's going to be game two. And game three, we could switch back into our typical sort of demock gate stuff. Um, but I actually think like, you know, the burn deck does take a couple turns of setup to actually get going and they don't really have the most outs to what we're doing with the science FDK. So I actually do think that just keeping the science FDK in is perfectly fine. And that is indeed what I'm going to go for because I do think that, you know, this is a better matchup against burn than our typical main deck does. Um, they're going to go for Wave Motion Cannon, set three, pass back to us. We draw a Reasoning. They go for Anti-Spell Fragrance, which can stop our deck uh, and just be a little bit annoying for us. So we got to think about how much we want to set and what we're doing next turn. We could potentially set all five because we're definitely going to use some of these spells next turn. But I also don't want to like clog up all of our monster zone or all of our spell and trap card zones. Um, but I think in hindsight, I probably should have set all five. Okay, I do set all five, yeah. Because, you know, there's no reason to really like not clog these all up because we're just going to use them all next turn anyways. So opponent's going to go for um, an exiled force here, attacking for a thousand, dropping us down a little bit, and they'll pass back to us. We draw a true nade, which is really good. Um, to use that, we have to open up uh, a back row slot. So we're going to go for reasoning here. We do indeed hit a turtle, um, and they called eight. So, you know, that's nice. We bring out an attack because I do have like change of heart plus monster gate. Uh, so I can change of heart their exiled force and then Monster Gate away and get in for a ton of damage that way. So that's why I bring out an attack. They're going to go for Rivalry, though, before we can do anything too fancy here. And uh, that actually is perfectly fine. What we can do is we can tribute off the Turtle, deal 500, take control of their Exiled Force with the Change of Heart, and then go for Gate. So uh, we hit a Crane, which is pretty nice. We get to draw a card here. We draw a Pot of Greed, which is really good. We're going to attack in for 1600 here. And then main two, we're going to go for Forceful just to see what they've got in hand. We see they've got a Secret Barrel plus Sakuretsu Armor. And I take back the barrel because we got Trinade anyways to bounce back their card. So I don't really care about the Saku. I care much more about the Chainable Trap there. And then we're going to set four or set three and pass back to our opponent. We could have gone for Painful to deck then a little bit, but I want Painful for like combo plays next turn. And I feel like we've got a very good setup here overall. So um, our opponent's going to set one, pass back to us, and we draw Chaos Sork, which is really good. I'm very glad I saved the Painful because now we can go for a Sork Dim Fuse play. So we're going to go for Trinade, send everything back to hand, and uh, we are just, we've got many, many ways to win. So we're going to start by going for Painful Choice here, sending a button of Light and Darks. Uh, they give us Demok, and uh, yeah, we, we should win the game here. Uh, 10 ways to Sunday, we banish the Crane and the Jinzo there. And then we're going to like style on our opponent a little bit. We're going to go for uh, the Demok, get out Monster Gate. We're going to Monster Gate away that Demok. And then we get out a Scientist as well. Uh, now we can go for Pot here, draw two. And now we can go for Dim Fuse, bring out all those monsters. And uh, yeah, I mean, this would have been an OTK even if we, if we hadn't dealt damage to our opponent, this would have definitely been an OTK as we got like 10 ways to Sunday to actually pull this off. But uh, yeah, we're not going to style on them any further. I feel like this is ultimately fine. Um, but yep, that will be the end of the game there. And, you know, this does show that the science deck can win in certain situations. Uh, for instance, like, given the hand that we had there, uh, I think we actually might have been able to win with the science FDK deck uh, that game if we had gone first. I mean, we would have probably also sided out change of heart if we were going first there. We mainly had change of heart because we knew that we were going second. Um, but, uh, yeah, we probably would have been able to win that game. So the science FDK deck can indeed win games. It's just, like, the consistency of it or the inconsistency of it is what makes me not really like it the most. But this one, the only match we played against Helios Trent. Let's dive into the next one. Okay, we got our next game in Helios Trent, and they actually brought a variety of different decks. So it's sort of fun to see all the different decks that they brought. So we are going to... Oh, this is a pretty... Uh, actually, this, this is not that bad. I was going to say it's a pretty bad hand. But we do have the scapegoat to pair with the gate. We got Chaos Orc for later. Um, so, you know, we got a lot of different options here. They're going to go for Rhoda, getting out a Goblin Attack Force. They're going to go for Pod as well. Bring out the Goblin Attack Force, attack in for 23. We're just going to use the goat 
uh, to sort of uh, block that off. They might not choose to attack here to just leave their Goblin Attack Force in attack, but instead they're going to attack in. Uh, goblin Attack Force will switch to defense here. And we draw another gate that is super, super good because we also have this Demon in hand attribute out. Um, so we're going to go for Trunade here just to try and insulate our OTK push. Uh, we also have another Trunade in hand, um, but we could potentially like very easily win the game here. So we hit a Crane, uh, which is pretty good. We get to draw a card off that. So now we have Snatch Shield, potentially go into something else. Um, we're going to hit a Blowback Dragon, which is pretty good. Um, I actually make a little bit of a misplay here. What I needed what I needed to do here was I needed to go for Snatch Shield on the Goblin Attack Force, bring over Goblin and the Blowback to break out uh, Demok, potentially get Gate back to tribute off the token, uh, get another card there, banish uh, for Chaos Orc, and uh, be pretty good there. I think that would win me the game. But um, instead, what I do is I go for blowback here. This was the incorrect play, uh, because if I do pop the goblin, then, you know, I'm, I lose out on basically both these monsters instead of just one. So uh, luckily, I do miss the blowback, so it sort of insulates me from my bad play. I go for demock here. I think a bit about this, um, because it is a little bit tricky, but I do think I get more expected damage off the monster gate here um, than just, you know, getting back pre -mat to bring back the, uh, oh, there's actually no crane engraved anyway. So yeah, pre mat it would not have been good here. Because I need both these monsters engraved to banish anyway. So yeah, this was the correct choice in my opinion. We get out of Jinzo as well. We banish two for Chaos Orc, and that should be the end of the game there. So, you know, very quick game. This game, this deck can produce very quick games here. Um, and it's always fun when you sort of like get those quick games in my opinion. But we are going to be going second here. Uh, they are going to draw they're going to bring out uh a t set and pass that's perfectly fine by us um we got a bit of a couple interesting choices here we want to go for painful send a bunch of lights and darks to grave uh, because then that sets up for our chaos orc but also if we send uh the double fusilier triple crane combo we've got more live targets for monster gate so that's pretty good as well um they are going to give us a fusilier here that's perfectly fine because what we can do is we can set that fusilier go for the gate here tribute that off and uh we will hit Oh, we hit. We hit. Oh, we go through a lot of our deck here. Uh, we hit a Demok. That's really good for us. Uh, we're going to go Demok and think about exactly what to get. We have a lot of good options for spells. We could just go for Pot to draw two more. Um, we could... Yeah, it's a bit tricky here. We could go for Gate as well to fuel our Dim Fuse. So that might be the move. Um, we, uh, we do need to just go for Gate to fuel our Dim Fuse. I think that's still correct. Uh, we go for Gate. We hit a uh, Fusilier there. We go for gate again. Uh, we hit a blowback. What we're really trying to hit is Jinzo because we want to shut off that back row, but blowback is still okay. Um, blowback can also hit their monster potentially, so uh, we will indeed go for that. We hit heads, and we hit heads. Okay, so that will pop their monster there. Uh, we banish two for the Chaos Orc here, and uh, we go for Dim Fuse, and that should be the end of the game unless they're, they've just been holding this TT for a really long time, um, which you know is definitely a possibility, but... If they were holding the TT for a really long time, then what we can do is we can get back... Well, yeah, because it does target, so... Um, I guess what we could do is just get back Dim Fuse's insurance, but I think that... Um, yeah, because Saku didn't kill us here, and that's really the big risk, would be like Saku. So yeah, I think we should get back Dim Fuse's insurance, um, because then we can sort of go into our combos again. But we get back Trinade instead. Uh, or no, we actually get back MST, because this gives us more information on what they might have. We go for MST on their back to say Saku. And that will be more than the end of the game. So, yeah, uh, very, very quick games here. Uh, as I said, this deck can be very quick. If you pull off the combo, it's very, very strong. So definitely a scary deck to look out for. We got some more matches, though, so let's dive into the next one now. So we got our next match against Helios Trident here. Uh, as I said, we played a bunch of these because they were just really fun to play. Like, this format's really fun. Uh, a lot of very cool decks to experiment with. So, you know, we were just diving into it. They're going to go for Terraforming, add Legendary Ocean. I'm already scared because this mean, might mean that they're on Science Step DK. Uh, which is pretty rough. They're going to go for Scientist, and my fears are kind of confirmed. But luckily, you know, this is kind of an awkward sequencing because, like, this means that they don't have the Turtle in hand already, so that's pretty good. They're going to go for Gate there. If they get out Turtle, that's unfortunate, but it's not the end of the world. They do hit an Abyss Soldier, though, so I'm feeling okay about that. They're going to set one, go for the Legendary Ocean, pass back to us. We draw Jinzo, so that's pretty good. We got a lot of different options here. We're going to go for Trunade first, and I think that I can set up a pretty good OTK here, potentially. We go for Painful. We send Triple Crane, Double Fusilier. Um, you've seen this combo before. We get back Fusilier. So it actually gets out sort of all the, not bricks or dead cards, but like all the sort of lowest impact uh, monsters from our deck. 
So we do hit a Democ here, which is pretty cool. Unfortunately, we don't really have the biggest selection of spells in Grave to get back. Uh, I think Forceful is probably the best option. We do indeed get back the Forceful. Um, because that, that stops their follow-up next turn. We go for a Forceful here just to see what they're working with. We see they've got Levia, Legendary Ocean, MST, and a Legendary Ocean. Not the best hand from them. So I think what we want to do here, because we already have Normal Summoner set, I think what we want to do is we want to actually send the Levia back to deprive them of a Water for Abyss Soldier. So um, that is indeed what we're going to do here. All they've got left are MST, Legendary Ocean, Legendary Ocean. And now we can hit over the Scientist Steel 25 and banish that Scientist, get it out of here. Uh, then we'll set the Regeki Break to pass back to our opponent. In standby phase, we're just going to use the Regeki Break just in case they have a uh, Water Monster in hand. So maybe I didn't really need to do this. Uh, maybe I could have sent back, you know, the MST instead of the Levia. But I think it's still fine. Um, Levia is just annoying if they ever get a monster on field. They're going to set two pass back to us. We draw scapegoat, which is pretty good. We're just going to attack in for 28, just in case they drew into Torrential. Um, you know, if we wanted to put more of a clock on them, we could have summoned out Fusilier. But realistically, the clock is still the same because, you know, it's still a two-turn clock no matter how we slice it. We're going to set a uh, scapegoat here. They've got MST for that. We knew about the MST. We kind of wanted to bait it out because scapegoat isn't really uh, the best in this sort of winning position. But um, they set one pass back to us. Uh, we dropped TT, so that's pretty good. We can just sort of play it slow here, I think. Uh, attack over their set. Uh, banish that Abyss Soldier. Uh, we get TT in case they do anything too crazy, and then we get Fusilier to follow it up and deal 14. They got Heavy, though, to deal with our set. They do have Tribe here as well to pop our Democ, and then we're in a bit of a tough spot. So we're going to be losing 1,800 every turn from this if we don't stop it. Um, scapegoat is a good way to stop it, but the awkward thing here, that Tribe can deal with Scapegoat. However, to do that, it does require them to pitch whatever card they get from hand. So uh, we're just going to go for the scapegoat here, uh, get four cards out. And if they want to deal with that, they have to pitch whatever card they have in hand. If it's Serpent, we get majorly punished for this. Uh, but given they are playing like Reasoning Gate stuff, I feel like they're probably not on Serpent because uh, it kind of conflicts. They're going to pitch a gate, and we are happy about that. Uh, we draw MST. Uh, we're just going to set that pass back to our opponent. We've got a bit of time here. Um, they go for Reasoning, and it's a bit of a tricky choice. I feel like they're likely on more Levias than they are on Demox, and Levia is sort of like, well, it doesn't quite win them the game, but it's really, really good. So we just call 7 to hit the Levia. Um, but unfortunately, they hit a Catapult Turtle. So that will be 3,000 damage. Not quite the end of the game yet, but we're getting close. Um, so this is a little bit awkward. Luckily, our Fusilia can hit over the Turtle, but uh, Call is really good here. Call actually gets us back into the game, potentially. Uh, we attack over the turtle with Fusilier. We set the call, pass back to our opponent. Uh, they go for the tribe, popping our Fusilier attack in for 18. We do go for call here because, you know, they've used up their hand. So they can't get over this Jinja with the tribe. And they'll pass back to us. We have reasoning as well. Um, so we might as well just go for reasoning here. Oh, actually we don't. That's a bit interesting. Um, I guess because we've gone through all our fours and sevens. But I think it's... Oh, I guess because, like, deck out is a possibility. So... We are in a good spot, so we don't need to risk deck out. Uh, our opponent's going to draw here. They're going to go for Dim Fuse, but they don't have a life, enough life points to do that, so that will be the end of the game. But going into game two here, um, we just keep the deck the same. Again, you know, uh, our side deck is Science of FDK, so not really a point to siding to that here. Um, this is a pretty good hand. A lot of flexibility with the card destruction. Unfortunately, we do have a bunch of monsters here, so that's kind of rough. But opponent's going to go for Upstart, set one pass back to us. We draw a ring. Which is pretty good. We're going to go for Crane. They do have the ring for that. Just stopping that in case we got a gate. I think that's the smart play. Uh, and then we're just going to set this ring pass back to them. We don't need to go for card destruction now. Uh, because we don't really have as many plays as we might. If we had a normal summon left. So they're going to go for the reasoning there. Hit a uh, Abyss Soldier. And they're going to go for a gate on the Abyss Soldier. We could have potentially ringed preemptively just to stop that. But I feel pretty good about this. What we wanted to save the ring for was if they had like Last Will. If they activated Last Will, then we go for ring on it. Um, because then it would hit Grave before Last Will's effect actually triggered, so, um, or w the condition was in effect, so, uh, it would have been a pretty good use there. Uh, we asked if they use Pryo, and they are indeed going to use Pryo. We chained Ring to it, because they bring out Senshi, then we can't use Ring anymore on it. So we just want to get it out of here. Uh, they bring out a Super Robo Yaru, to sort of contrast our Super Robo Lady play earlier, and then they're going to go for a Gate to bring out an Abyss Soldier here. They're attacking directly for 18, uh, so we will take that, and then main two, they're just going to pass back to us. We draw a painful choice, which is really good. Um, we could go for that now, or we could go for card destruction first to see what we get. We do go for the painful just to sort of deck them a little bit. Uh, we send the double hand rips, we send pre we send snatch, and we send change. So the reason we do this is because, you know, 
uh, change and snatch gets us a tribute monster. Pre mount also gets us a tribute monster, and the hand rips are good for if we go for card destruction here. So uh, they do give us a hand rip, giving us the compy. And so what we'll do is we'll set the compy, go for card destruction, uh, discard three, and then we can rip their hand apart here. We draw reasoning plus call plus geki. That's really good for us. Uh, we go for reasoning. They do call eight correctly, which is unfortunate, but we can go for a compy here. Uh, we see that they've got reasoning, gate, and legendary ocean. We take gate because gate. Definitely special summon to the amount of monster, whereas at least with the reasoning, we can sort of uh, control that a little bit. We set the call pass back to our opponent because what I want to do is I want to bait them into using Abyss Soldier on the call because if they do that, then we can use call, bring back Jinzo, and Jinzo will stay on field, and then we'll get another use of call later. So I think that's the best option for us. They go for reasoning here. Uh, we see that what they've got in Grave. Uh, a couple different options that we could pick here. I think eight might be the best one because eight's a little bit awkward for us. And we do hit eight. So they bring out a uh, level seven here, which is quite unfortunate. It's uh, Levia Dragon. And they're going to go for the Legendary Ocean here. Legendary Ocean uh, buffs up the Abyss Soldier and the Levia Dragon. So, um, you know, it can actually crash with Demok here. Uh, and, you know, they will indeed uh, go for that. Now, we could have gone for Call immediately when they brought out the, uh, or when they activated Legendary Ocean, because, you know, figuring that they might send everything to Grave. But, um, I mean, that, that actually might have been the correct play. Yeah, I think in hindsight, that probably would have been the right play, because then what we do is we, like, get back um, Snatch Shield, and then Snatch Shield deals with Levia. So, yeah, in hindsight, that was definitely the correct play to um, go for Demok in main one when they activated Legendary Ocean. Uh, but I didn't think of it, and uh, as is, I make another big sort of misplay here. I get back Dimension Fusion, because basically the idea is I'm thinking, okay, they're going to crash Levia into Demok, then I can Dimension Fusion back to Demok, get back a powerful spell from Grave, and go for the win that way. Whatever, uh, I do forget that uh, the uh, Levia will also get banished, so they'll be able to get back their Levia as well. So that's not really the best play for um, what to get back off Demok, and we're in a really tough uh, position. Uh, our opponent will also be able to attack with the Abyss Soldier because that's how replay rules work in this format. So we're down to uh, 2300, which makes a Dimension Fusion activation pretty risky. We're going to go for Trinade here, uh, sending back those two cards from hand. We go for Dim Fuse here as well to bring back the Demok, get back a better spell here. Um, again, not really the best trade for us, um, but we get back. We think about it a bit, and we do get back a Snatch Shield here. So what we can do is we can Snatch the Abyss Soldier, attack over the um, Levia Dragon with the Abyss Soldier attack indirectly for 28. Now, there are tons of things our opponent can draw to out this board. If we had played this differently, we would have had a much better shot at winning here. But as is, we're in a bit of an awkward spot. Um, so they're going to just set one pass back to us, though, and that's really good for us. Uh, so we potentially are back in it. We go for the Regeki Break on their set. It's a TT, and that will be the end of the game there. So... You know, we made it out of this one by the skin of our teeth. It looks like they just had double legendary ocean, which does happen if you go for this sort of Levia uh, gate deck. Um, but I think that if I had structured this last turn differently, then we actually could have been just in a much better position uh, and just won the game much more confidently. But that's going to do it for this game. Let's dive into the last match I have to show for you uh, and show what this deck does against a bit more of a meta strategy. Okay, we got our last match against Helios Trident here. Uh, you know, these games have been great. It's been a pleasure to have Helios Trident on the channel. Um, and if you want to be on the channel in the future as well, I get games through the YGF from Zero Discord server where we also, you know, get games in any of the formats uh, that I've covered on the channel and hold tournaments and things like that. So definitely head on over there uh, if you want to sort of play games in these formats. But we're going to go for Forceful because we did draw it. Um, we see that they've got Night of Salem, Thunder Dragon, Premat, Thunder Dragon, and Forceful. I think of this, we probably want to send back uh, the Forceful because... You know, this gives us the most options to keep in hand. And Double Thunder is a bit of a brick. Night of Salem is kind of annoying, but we got Break to deal with that. So I'm not really too concerned about that. And uh, they don't really have the best things to pre-map back. So uh, they're going to send back the Night of Salem. We just set two, pass back to our opponent. Uh, we've got Scapegoat in case they draw an aggressive monster. Uh, if they don't, then we get Regeki Break, deal with whatever they might set. And uh, they're going to set one and just pass back to us. We draw a Dark Magician of Chaos. That's pretty good. It means that our reasoning will likely be live no matter what we hit. And we hit a Fusilier, which is pretty nice. Uh, we are going to go for a Geki Break, pitching the Demok, popping the set there, and getting in for 2,800. Uh, we pass back to our opponent. They will think about this a bit, go for a Light and Dark Banish, and go for Chaos Zork. That's kind of unfortunate. Uh, this will banish our Fusilier there. They're going to go for Rota as well to get a DD Warrior Lady out. And uh, then they're going to summon out the DD Warrior Lady, attack in directly. We go for Scapegoat here. 
to protect our life points a bit and also get fuel for monster gate if we do draw that there's also the argument for like saving the scapegoat for later um because we're only taking 15 here but uh we've got three tokens on field so they need to bring out another monster in order to fully capitalize on that so i feel like this is ultimately fine we do draw sacred crane which is a little bit awkward what we could do is we could summon that crane attack into warrior lady uh both get banished probably um but then at least we clear a monster off field so that's something we could do we also might want to save crane for like a gate activation but we still have tokens on field for gate so i think probably would have been best to summon a crane attacking the dv war lady but i chose not to do that just to sort of have more plays later they're going to go for a forceful send back a true nade here which might mean that they drew into some live back row actually no they didn't draw into live back row because we know their hand exactly it's pretty mad thunder thundra so you know um Ultimately fine, they banish a token with the Sork, attack over a token with the Warrior Lady, and we draw into Gate, so we're going to Gate away our remaining token, and we hit, what do we hit here? We hit a, oh, we lose both of our Chaos Monsters, which is kind of unfortunate. We hit a Jinza, which is not terrible. It's a little bit awkward because they are pre mapped to bring back the Chaos Sork, but, you know, we got to do what we got to do. We're going to attack over the Chaos Sork there, we're going to attack over the DD Warrior Lady to banish that. Uh, oh, they choose not to banish, okay, they do choose to banish, yeah. Uh, and we'll just pass back to our opponent. They've got pre-mat for the Sork, so they'll be able to bring out that, potentially banish the Jinzo, and they will indeed do that. They can't attack off the Sork. Um, okay, this was actually, we both missed this. They can't attack off Sork because they banished this turn. So that might have actually changed the math on this game a little bit, but we're going to set a, uh, you know, Fusiliate. They go for change. They flip up, or they bring out a Thundra. This is 3,900. Uh, so, you know, at this point, we would have been at uh 4100 so this isn't quite a two-turn clock on us we draw reasoning here so we're going to go for reasoning uh they're going to think about this a bit they're going to call four and they do not hit that so we hit a seven so we able to get out fusilier here we attack over the uh sork with the fusilier and that deals with the free mat as well uh we pass back to them they go for lily and this actually we still would have been in a tough spot because they have us on a two-turn clock um but we, we would have actually been able to survive this because this would have been 2,200, uh, which means we would have been left with 1,900 left. Um, they would have been at 1,800. So there are ways that we could have actually survived this uh, and plenty of draws off the top that we could have gotten that would have allowed us to survive as well. So um, definitely unfortunate about missing the Chaos Orc thing. Uh, that might have changed the outcome of the game. But um, I still think that was a pretty good game overall. And uh, it shows how explosive this deck can be, but also explosive uh chaos turbo or something like that can be as well so we're going to be going first here so i do side into the science 50k i figure for the video i gotta just show off what the science 50k does um you know as a side deck tool uh, as is this hand is not good this is a really bad hand we set a, an mst and set a fusilier pass back to our opponent but this is really really bad uh they go for heavy on the mst they go for kaiku to clear the fusilier and we will lose that they're gonna set one pass back to us we draw sacred crane uh, not the best, but, you know, we did get kind of what we wanted. We wanted the Fusilia and Grave for our pre-mat here. So we're going to go for that. Try and bring back the Fusilia. They've got Raigeki Break, though, to deal with the pre-mat. And so we're just going to set this crane. because We don't want to lose the Fusilia in Grave. Um, they bring out a DD Warlay, though, so they're going to attack over that. And we just banish it because either way, it's going to get banished here. So they're not going to use the DD Warlay on it, but they can just use the Kaiku to banish it instead. So we're in a really tough spot. Um, they're going to pass back to us. We draw a Spell Reproduction here. And uh, that's not really going to help us here. Uh, we could spell repro back in MST or a pre-map, but neither of those do anything. Um, so they're just going to attack in for 3,300. And uh, we're in a really, really tough spot. Uh, we could potentially draw ways to deal with this, but... Oh, painful actually is really good. Could painful, and then we've got spell reproduction online no matter what we have. So, but there isn't really a good way to do that. So what we could do is we could painful send scientists um ah man it, it's just tough because we can't even really send scientists because if they just give a scientist what do we do right we could use scientists effect twice to bring out two monsters but then we can't actually capitalize on that really um so yeah i we don't have really a good option here at least i couldn't see one in the moment i go for painful and i think about this a bit i send pot dim fuse uh demock and uh comfy walk the reason why i send these is because like um i mean dim fuse we get back our two monsters which is pretty good and then we could potentially make plays happen um 
uh, yeah, it, it's just kind of awkward. They're probably going to give us the Dark Magician of Chaos, but then we can go for Spell Reaper to bring back Dim Fuse, activate Dim Fuse, bring out our monsters, bring out Dark Magician of Chaos, get back at Spell, and try to go from there. I think that's the play that I was trying to make, um, but it is, like, kind of awkward here. They're going to give us the Democ. Uh, indeed, we go for Spell Repro to bring back the Dim Fuse. We're at 100 life points, which is a little bit risky, um, but I think it is just what we have to do. Uh, we bring back the Fusilier and the Crane. We get a draw off the Crane. Uh, we draw into Forceful, so that's something. We're going to tribute off both of our monsters, go for the Democ there, add back a Pot of Greed. Um, I think that is the best option that we have here of the remaining cards. We go for Pot, draw two, and oh, we draw into two monsters, so that's not really the best for us here. Uh, we can just clear the Kaiku, so that's something. Um, but you know, that won't be enough because the DB Warly will still be around. So that's potentially an argument for just keeping the facility and crane. What we could do is just attack crane over DB Warly, attack facility over Kaiku, um, and be in an ultimately fine spot from that point. Then we can go for Demok in like main two. Um, but you know, that does die to like break Aki break and other stuff. They've got call anyways, so it wouldn't matter here. They could just, you know, let the DB Warly die, bring it back with call and do stuff later and they also could just bring back kaiku hit over uh crane that way so yeah they're uh yeah they were gonna win this one either way probably they have another D uh dd worley so that's just gonna be the end of the game either way so uh you know i could have gone for forceful here as well but realistically you know they're set solos that anyway so i want to bluff uh trap here but that's going to do it for the games. Uh, you know, I think this shows why I do not like the Scientist FDK sort of siding strategy. I think it's a little bit too cute, and it's not quite consistent enough to actually be good. The deck on its own is already extremely good. You don't need this sort of gimmick to actually boost its win rate. Uh, you're much more likely to win just playing the regular deck than Scientist FDK. But, you know, maybe there are adjustments that you can make to the Scientist FDK side that I have to sort of increase the consistency. Uh, however, I'm probably, if I play this deck in the future, I'm probably just going to use a typical sideboard. So, you know, take the, the games I lost here with a little bit of grain of salt, not too much as, you know, the games where I was playing the sort of regular main deck, definitely I would have lost those games either way. But, uh, for the side decking, you know, it's definitely a much worse version of what the deck could be if you actually side decked well. Uh, but that's going to do it for the video. If you enjoyed, as always, please do leave a like and down below and definitely subscribe if you want to see more Warrior content as well as any of the other uh, forums that are featured on the channel and any future content I make for future formats. Um, also, let me know what you think of the decks down below in the comments. And if you want to support me directly, I have a Patreon, so definitely sign up for that. Uh, so big shout outs to my patrons, Brent Donker, Porkchop Coon, GMYFS, and Rincewind for supporting me directly like that. It really does mean a lot to me and motivates me to make even more of these videos. So, uh, I hope that you enjoyed this video as always, and until next time, I've been Ben from YG Option Zero, and I'm signing off.